Hello everyone, welcome to a collection of open entries. My name is Mila. I'm back with another podcast episode. I have so many podcast episodes written, so be prepared for a bunch of episodes to be coming out. I'm very excited. It's summertime, exams are finished, and I feel like there's just so much going on and so much that's going to be coming that I'm just in a very good mood. And you know what? I felt like it's currently 7 p.m. I was planning on filming tomorrow, but I was like, I really feel like I could film a podcast episode right now. You know, I love filming these episodes. I feel like they bring out so much positive energy in me and I love talking on here. So I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat. First things first though, I do want to acknowledge the fact and congratulate everybody who has finished their exams, whether that's GCSEs, A-levels, uni exams, whether you've just graduated, well done. You should be so, so proud of yourself for making it through this year. I can say, hand on my heart, this year has been crazy and I am so proud of myself for getting through the year, number one so you should be too. But I feel like a lot of people, as well like just from talking with my friends and things, there's been a lot learnt from this year. I feel like there's been a lot of character development, a lot of evolving, and I've met some incredible people. I had no idea what my summer was going to look like this year, but I think it's safe to say that I'm very excited. Definitely will be filming more podcasts on that, but let's just say I've got two trips booked so far, so I'm I'm feeling really, really excited about that. So I'll be sharing a little bit more on social media, but that kind of ties into today's podcast episode, which is on the topic of social media. I feel like, and I'm sure many people can relate to this idea, but Don't we think becoming a social media influencer is kind of, it's becoming a little bit of a trend. I feel like a lot of people are really craving that role, that title of being a social media influencer. I think a lot of the time we see these people online who can be labeled as a social media influencer and we're like, oh, I want that lifestyle. I want to travel. I want the money. I want the experiences. I want... I want that kind of freedom in my life and I feel like there's so much more to it and I kind of wanted to delve into that in today's episode because I do have a suspicion that this whole want and craving is number one fairly new but number two it is really taking us away from living in the moment and enjoying life for what it is. So I wanted to delve into that today, talk about that a little bit more, and normalize not having this luxury as they, as some portray it, lifestyle. Number one, I will hold my hands up and say that I have, and still do a lot of the time, also have this want. Um, I love the idea of sharing things on social media, talking about positive things that I feel like can help other people but a lot of the time I think it's very easy to become wrapped up in the whole dynamic of I need to post on this platform on that platform I need to share my stories I want to make myself as seen as possible and especially today when the social media pool of creators is ever growing and so large I feel like it's so so difficult for people to become recognized and so much more than it was even five years ago not to even compare to the very first social media influencers when Instagram YouTube all of that first came out when you really think about it and actually start trying to live up to that expectation of posting and creating content I think you don't realize how much time influencing actually takes up like it it genuinely is a job and obviously I will say I don't think it's comparable to being a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or any other kind of hands-on job role like that. However, it does just consume a lot of time objectively because you're always, you know, I would say the social media people, they're always looking on their phones, they're always posting things, they need to come up with ideas, things like that. And so I think nowadays compared to before, because there are so many social media platforms that you need to keep up with, it takes up a lot of time. And so people that are 
doing good and solely focus on social media as their mainstream of income, I do think most of them have a team behind them and they have people helping them because otherwise you're not going to have a life really. You're either going to be filming, posting or planning things or editing and I feel like anybody would be miserable in that kind of position. So is that something that you really want? Therefore, that kind of leads me on to my next point, which makes me think, and my hypothesis is, if you solely want to become a social media influencer from the ground up, without any other entry means, I do think you already need to have a little bit of money, because I think the most effective way to get into it would be if you already had a team behind you, if you had an editor, if you maybe had a videographer, if you had somebody directing you, giving you insights into what's trending, what's doing best, and that you're the one solely putting all your energy into creating content. I think that's the number one thing. However, I want to actually talk a little bit more about the idea of, is it really appealing to be spending all your time focused on the digital world and on a digital platform? I've had quite a few of my friends and people ask me, hey Mila, you know, what's going on with your podcast? You've not filmed anything in a while, I've not seen anything going up. And I've really been trying lately to focus on prioritizing my happiness and living in the moment. And I think that I've been doing a decent job at it. And part of that involved me taking a step back from my podcast. I felt like for a while, it started to become a little bit of a task and I felt like I had to be constantly creating things and I felt like I was spending too much time staring into my phone. So I've been trying to experience more things without filming them as much, without taking as many pictures. I am not a saint though. I do still use my phone obviously, but just to a lesser extent than I feel like I was. But I do think that when we get so wrapped up in this whole social media influencer lifestyle that seems so appealing when we're just watching it, I think the actual creation of it really takes away from living your life in the moment. I want to talk about the other day I went to the races and while I was at the races, my phone hit 3% and then, you know, once you, once you hit 3%, it quickly goes down to two, then one and then niche, nothing. So I basically had no phone for the whole day. If anybody was taking pictures or if I was getting any pictures, it was on somebody else's phone or digital camera or whatever, but I had no phone for the whole day. Now, when you're at the races, there's not really much to do besides you're either sat down watching the horses, betting, which I did not do because I don't trust myself and I don't have a single clue about horse racing and so I definitely would have lost money and that would not have been smart. Or number three, you're socializing. Now, of course, we were there from 12 until six. For six hours, I don't want to just be sat down waiting for the four or five races that are going to happen. So I because I didn't have my phone and I couldn't be scrolling, looking at photos, filming things, making TikToks or whatever, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get up and I'm going to socialize. And I, bearing in mind, I was fully sober. I didn't have one drop of alcohol and I still got myself up and went around and socialized, which is a completely normal thing to do. However, I feel like it's become less normalized in today's drinking and social media culture. I basically was put into position because I didn't want to just be sat down all day. I got up and I like saw people and I was like, oh my god, I love that person's outfit. I'm going to go and compliment them. I'm going to go introduce myself. I saw so many people that I recognized that I feel like now looking back, maybe I wouldn't have even noticed if I had my head in my phone all day long. And I got to know a bunch of new people, heard different people's stories. I caught up with people that I haven't spoken to in a while. I got to appreciate different outfits. The races are actually so interesting because everybody interprets it differently. I would say everybody believed or everybody felt like they had to dress up, but the connotations of dressing up is very different for everyone. It was so interesting to just people watch for a little while and see how different people interpreted dressing up for the races. I personally wore this like long green dress and I went for like the ice skater boots, I think they're called. But anyway, I got into a conversation with a bunch of really interesting people hearing about 
some that had graduated, some of us had mutual friends, getting to know some of my friends' friends, and that was really, really fun, and it made the day very memorable. And also now looking back, it was enjoyable because I feel like I got to absorb the whole energy and the atmosphere, whereas I feel like if you're spending all day on your phone, you're kind of more sucked into the digital world than you are in the physical world and so more of what you remember is the pictures you took and the videos you took rather than the experiences you actually had and also like I just didn't want to be sat down and feel cold all day long because it was quite windy um so yeah leading on from that that was a very enjoyable experience for me and that's why I want to make a hypothesis right now I'm gonna make a prediction so if if this makes me turn out to be some kind of fortune teller, even though I feel like probably loads of people have predicted this, then let's call me a fortune teller. I genuinely think in the years to come, it's going to become more trendy to have flip phones and digital cameras. We're already seeing the digital camera becoming a big thing. It's already very trendy right now. When I was at the races, almost everybody wanted to get pictures on the digital camera. Why? Because it looks cute, because it's vintage aesthetic, and I feel like that's a very trendy aesthetic at the minute. However, I feel like there's another reason behind why we're going to be seeing more digital cameras and flip phones being introduced. And I think that's because it takes us away from social media. I think with how normalised it is to be so ingrained and sucked into the digital world, Sadly, in the 21st century and as a society, unfortunately, we have kind of forgotten, I think, how liberating it is to not use social media. And when I was at the races, I was really enjoying living in the moment. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow, I'm just, I'm feeling really alive and happy right now. And so I feel like that kind of serotonin dopamine rush that you get from just actually being will start to become more of a want soon and with the flip phone you don't have social media you have the ability to phone someone text someone and that's basically it and then with the digital camera I feel like that's gonna become more trendy because obviously you can take photos with your phone and objectively an iPhone is gonna have a better quality camera than a digital camera But the thing is, when you're taking photos on your iPhone, you're then more likely to, you know, take the photo and then start staring at it. How can I edit it? Should I post this on Snapchat? Should I post this on Instagram? Then you go on Instagram, you post, then you start scrolling, then and then you kind of get warped up into social media again. Whereas with a digital camera, you take the picture and then maybe you look at it later at the end of the day. So I think it's actually going to become more of a trend to take a step back from social media, to live more presently. And you know, we're seeing this actually becoming more of a trend with many social media influencers. For example, Emma Chamberlain. It's become so trendy in the top status level social media influencer world, Emma Chamberlain, Liza Koshy, you know, all those people to be more discreet, more quiet, more, have more of a private life and not post as much. Of course, you could argue and say, well, obviously, they're not posting as much because they they already made it. They don't need to anymore. But I genuinely think that that's the more enjoyable way to live. And I can see that because they are kind of like the main influencers that more people will catch on to that. More people will be like, oh, you know, they're doing that, so I should do that. It was like when Emma Chamberlain posted that video, Reading Makes You Hot. Or it was something like that. And then everybody was suddenly like, I'm going to buy a book. I'm going to read again. And I feel like that's the kind of influence that we need right now. I think another thing we also need to think about if, you know, you're really craving becoming a social media influencer is thinking about your why. Why do you want it? Why do you want to get into it? If we look at the most successful social media influencers today, the ones that are not the ones that are just trending or have gone viral, but the ones that are in it for the long haul, the ones that, you know, are probably going to be developing a career after social media or are already along those lines or have already left social media because they've become successful in something else. The reason that they started was because they genuinely enjoyed the concept of content creation. They found it fun. 
a lot of the most successful people, they didn't have anybody else really to look up to that was living that social media, brand trips, traveling, money, lifestyle. They got into it because they genuinely enjoyed it. However, I feel like now the general idea is people want to get into social media influencing because they see the other successful social media, successful quote unquote, social media influencers. And they're like, I want that lifestyle. I want what they get out of social media content creation but I don't want to do the actual content creation as much and I feel like that's the problem. I think if you want to be good at something that you do you have to genuinely enjoy it. If you think about why you and you have to be really honest with yourself and sometimes that can be quite hard why you really want to get into social media content creation is it because it gives you quick money or it quickly gets you quote-unquote famous, or a quick fix to getting the things you want, let's just say you got there, then what would you do? Because it's the same analogy as, and again, I know this can be very subjective and it's a very touchy topic, but having infinite amounts of money or having extreme wealth is not the key to happiness in my opinion I'm not saying you can be super happy and have zero cash I'm not saying that but I'm saying like the extreme wealth or that kind of money that maybe some social media influencers portray online is not equal to a happy life a lot of the time as humans we crave a purpose or a trajectory or something to do. So say you immediately got that fame, say you went viral and you got that money and that lifestyle, what would you do next? Say you got it at 21, 22, what would you do next? It was very interesting because I think Billie Eilish even talked about this and how she very quickly became famous in you know, her late teens, early 20s and that now she was kind of like struggling with that a little bit. I could be wrong, but it's like, You don't just stop there. Like, as a human, we're constantly evolving, constantly growing. You want to be learning more. You want to be doing things, maybe giving back to the world in some sort of way. So I think that this whole concept or idea of becoming a social media influencer is, in our brains, like a quick fix to getting something we think we want. So I think what we really need to try to think about more is, what can we do? to give ourselves like a bit of a purpose or to realize that we don't need to be living this extravagant life so that we can just be enjoying our lives as they are. I think genuinely nowadays if you want to become a successful social media content creator I don't think that's something that you can achieve by that being your sole job or your sole focus. I think people that become more well known on social media today it's more likely to and and stay in it for the long run, I think that's more likely to happen by them becoming known through something else. Say it's journalism, say it's some great achievement they've done, it's something else that will maybe bring them into the social media world, but I think it's far less likely to become a content creator building yourself only from the ground up. Again, I'm not an expert, I could be wrong, and of course there are people that go viral, things like that, but I think getting to like a level of like you know the top top social media influencers I think nowadays you have to come in from a different route it's not going to be solely from social media just because the pool is so large so that's my take on it however I think we also need to take away this idea that we feel successful or that we're doing good because we're posting about stuff we're doing online I think we need to learn to be more content with ourselves as we are as human beings because realistically these people that are social media influencers there's no they're no, they're no different to us they are no different to us they are literally the exact same as us but just showing what they're doing in their day-to-day lives the same way that you go for brunch with your friends that's what they're doing but they're just posting about it the same way that you go on holiday they're just posting about it and a lot of the time they can't even fully enjoy those experiences because they're so focused on getting the right angle getting the right shot Whereas you, on the other hand, if social media content creation isn't your job, you can really enjoy and savor that moment and remember it and memorize it. And maybe if there's a different career path that you enjoy, you would find that more fulfilling than social media. However, obviously for everyone it's different. Some people might find social media content creation very fulfilling depending on 
what they're trying to give out to the world but I think it definitely varies per person and it shouldn't become this completely idealized thing because I wouldn't say not physically demanding but at least mentally I still wouldn't think that it's the easiest thing in the world considering all of that because I feel like I've been talking very very fast considering all of that I will say that I've definitely been just more content in life in general. I've been living more in the moment, saying yes to things more, experiencing things more, and I do genuinely feel a lot happier. So I want to challenge you. You as the listener or viewer, if you're watching the video version of this, try to go two to three days without social media. Now, maybe you think, that sounds silly, two or three days is nothing. Give it a second. Two to three days without social media when you're used to checking your phone every five to ten minutes, give it a go. See how it makes you feel, see what it forces you to do, and maybe just carry around a flip phone. Go grab an old flip phone, or just don't use your phone at all, or potentially delete all apps from your phone except for you know, the calling, messaging, see how your mind feels after that period of time. And if maybe you feel a little bit different about how you want to, I I genuinely think that it could have a really good positive impact on your mental health and how you maybe carry your day-to-day life moving forward. So if anybody does give that a go, please let me know. Message me on Instagram at a collection of open entries so that I can hear your thoughts and your feedback. And in general, I'm just very curious to hear what you think about this whole topic overall. I feel like it's a very interesting thing to talk about. And obviously, as I always say, I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional. These are just my own random thoughts. That's exactly why this is a collection of open entries because it's as if I was writing in a, in a diary entry, just getting my thoughts out on paper. So I'm very interested to hear what you think And if you're watching the video version of this, please feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this as well. And let's maybe start a conversation about it. Let's maybe make it a thing to, you know, have a little bit of a social media hiatus and call more, message more, rather than constantly using Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. Let me know what you think. And I am going to love you and leave you here. I loved filming this podcast episode. I love I love just sitting down and doing this and just reflecting and talking. I feel like it's so fun, so therapeutic, as I always say. I look forward to filming more podcast episodes very soon. I have so many ideas written out. And I will see you in my next episode. All right, talk soon. Bye.